Welcome to TechPresence with Damero. In this video, we are going to learn about the private points. So we are going to see right here, we have Azure Data Factory and how we can create the private endpoints and access our Azure SQL database. So what are the private endpoints? Private endpoints is a network interface that connects you privately and securely to the service powered by the Azure private link. Uh, that's what it is. So you can read all those details, but uh, here uh, I'm going to perform a demo and show you how you can uh, uh, create that. Now, if I will go to my portal and here is my SQL server. Now, in the SQL server, you have databases and here uh, one of the databases called the Tech Brothers IT. So if I would like to connect to this database, uh, I'm uh, able to connect to this database so just uh, fine. So I'm going to provide my password and it should be able to log me in. So I have uh, two tables here called total sale and then a total sale destination. So I'm going to right click here and select top uh, thousand rows. Now it, uh, it is showing me some data. Let's go back to the uh, server here. And now what we are going to do here, we are going to see some firewall and virtual networks here. So see right there. Uh, and here is my setting. So my setting is uh, uh, right now deny public network access is not grayed out right now. And here what I have the other setting is called allow Azure services and resources to access this uh, server. It is a yes. So what's happening here as I have allowed uh, the Azure services uh, uh, to access this uh, resource, uh, I'm able to go to the ADF Azure Data Factory and I can go ahead and create a link server, uh, links, link the service. Uh, so I'm going to do SQL Azure. Okay, here. And uh, then uh, what we can do, we can select our integration, subscription, name of the server, name of the database, uh, and uh, SQL authentication. In my case, uh, it's going to be TB user and uh, I'm going to provide the password. So, and now we can go ahead and test connection and it is uh, successful. So that's good, but what we would like to do, we would like to have uh, more security. So what we want to do here, we want to go in our uh, uh, SQL Server uh, settings here and we would like to, first of all, we would like to disable this part. So we don't want to uh, like allow Azure services or other resources to access this uh, uh, server. So I'm going to hit this uh, no and hit save. Now what's going to happen if I go back to the my Azure Data Factory and create a, a linked service, it's going to create the linked service but it's going to throw me error. Okay, here. So let's see what error is it going to throw. Go right there, select the server name, select the database name and SQL authentication. I'm going to provide that information there. So now Test connection failed, and you can see right there. Cannot connect to SQL database, Tech Brothers IT database, so Tech Brothers user. Check the linked service configuration is correct, and make sure the SQL database firewall allows the integration runtime to access. And if you guys have noticed that there, that's where we already have disabled that. We said that do not allow. Azure services and resources to access the server. So this is one way uh, to kind of secure it, but we are going to go one step ahead of that. So now it is asking, hey, okay, cannot open the server, but uh, you, what you can do, this is the IP address from where the ADF is accessing. Uh, if you add this IP to this uh, list, uh, okay, then uh, ADF will be able to access it. But we don't want to keep adding the IPs as well. Same way as I have uh, done the... Uh, um, allow um, Azure services and the resources to the uh, access the server to know. So if I go to the access uh, my database here, what's going to happen? Uh, now I'm going to get probably another error or or my, I might have to delete those IPs there, you know. So let me see. If I go here and uh, provide that. That's my username. And now let's see. It did a able to uh, let us log in because uh, Still, uh, we have the list of the IPs uh, there, right there, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And if then I will try to, I'm going to delete these IPs here. Now it's all good. I'm going to save that. And if I go try to log in back, uh, that's what is going to give me some errors. I'm going to go to the SQL databases. And here is my database. Uh, go to query window. And you can see that now. 
cannot open server tech browser IP uh, tech browser request with a login client IP with this one this is not allowed to access this uh, server so one of the thing is that we we don't keep adding the IPs of and uh, uh, those IPs can access this server but we don't want to do that we want to create a private endpoint on which this communication hand can happen and this server can be accessed so let's uh, go to the ADF and create an endpoint from there so we can access our SQL server that's our first uh, goal here now I'm gonna close this whole thing and let's start over so how we are gonna do that first of all we can start from actually from the link services here you see that manage private endpoints is not enabled as of now so one way you can go ahead and create it uh, from here and then use it so we can do that so SQL Azure let's start with Azure SQL okay so Azure SQL database and I'm gonna provide name here I'm gonna call it is the uh, private endpoint okay now remove that and here I have to create a new uh, IR this IR that's auto resolve integration runtime that's not gonna work with the private endpoint so I have to create the one with managed so I'm gonna go create the new one so you say Azure hit next and here I have to select a virtual network uh, configuration preview so I'm gonna enable that one and uh, then it's, it's need to be in the same region where my ADF is where my SQL uh, is and all that so I'm gonna select East US that's where my all the resources are so hit uh, next and uh, I could have given a name but it's called the integration runtime one so that is created and now once that's created uh, what's gonna happen now we right here see that we are gonna select the subscription down there we are gonna select the uh, uh, SQL or server name there so we are gonna select the database name there and it is asking you hey you do not have any managed private endpoint do you want to create it yes I would like to create it I hit uh, create new and uh, I'm gonna call this one uh, mg private endpoint okay and uh, I'm gonna be okay for which uh, uh, you wanna enter manually no I wanna go ahead and uh, use from my subscription I'm gonna select here subscription and which server so as we have selected the C Azure SQL server that's what it is gonna give us uh, because that's where we start our creating a link service so, so I'm gonna go ahead and create it now once you create it uh, it's gonna be stuck here on provisioning so you see it right there and now it is trying to connect to the your server name tech browsers and the database name tech browser IT and it's in provisioning provisioning now what you need to do you are in Azure data factory what you need to do you need to go to portal here and in the portal you're gonna go to the tech browsers that's our SQL database and here you are gonna go to the private endpoints so, so right there so click right there and here is that request so you will select this request and then go ahead and approve it so you can see from here tech browser it adf dot mg private point so that's the name we have given that and that's the request came here so we I'm gonna hit approve now yes approve it so provide some comments or whatever now it's in pending right now it's in approved in a second but on Azure data factory is still in the process of provisioning so it might stay there um, for a few seconds sometime it take like between minute and two so just uh, stick, stick around keep waiting and uh, you can refresh but uh, doesn't really matter you can click here it will refresh so once it's done it's gonna say approved here and then we will be able to create our linked service okay so finally I just refresh this uh, uh, manage private endpoint and uh, it was provisioning so I refresh here and it got approved so that's all good now we what we are gonna do we are gonna provide the username and password so I'm gonna go ahead and provide the password and we should be able to test this successfully okay so it is connection is successful and I'm gonna go ahead and create this uh, linked service that is using a private end point now this looks awesome and what we are gonna do here I'm gonna go back to the portal in just once this is creating let me let this complete okay so our private endpoint is created and our link service is created so you can go to the private endpoints right here and see the private endpoint it's in succeeded approved and we net default you know so that's all it's giving us right now and then now if you go to the uh, 
right here linked services so we have one link service serv linked service uh, and uh, that is also uh, tested successfully now let's go back to the azure portal and here i'm going to go to the tech browser now if i go to the uh, firewall and virtual uh, network so you see that this was grayed out before and now you can select deny public network access uh, and you can uh, totally disable that one so uh, now from the nobody can be able to access uh, this uh, server from um, uh, the uh, public network so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit save and uh, that's it now you are all good uh, and you can only access uh, your uh, uh, Azure database uh, uh, from the uh, by using the private endpoints uh, so if you go to private endpoints here you can see right there that's good now if you would like to access uh, now if we as uh, we have enabled uh, this feature in deny public networks access access here so you cannot really um, connect to this uh, SQL database from your uh, uh, the query window and all that. Uh, you have to have a VNet uh, and uh, create a public uh, uh, private endpoint, uh, uh, and there uh, you you should be able to connect to from the SSMS from the VM to the uh, C Azure database. So I have a video on that how how you can do that. So you can watch it because uh, now if I go back here, let me go back to databases and. Uh, now if we go query access there is no way we can access this one because we have a disable uh, that feature there so notice that before that before we uh, enable private endpoints uh, there was a different error and it always asked you hey you want to click here and add this ip now that is gone a connection to the server techwizit.net could not be established that might indicate an issue with your local firewall configuration so um, so there is no way now we can just simply click here and add this ip to the firewall and access that so you for to access your sql uh, Azure SQL database, uh, you need to have a VNet uh, uh, that is uh, uh, hosting a VM uh, and uh, then uh, uh, you are going to create a, a private endpoint for this Azure SQL database and then you will be able to uh, connect from there. So anyways, uh, let's go back to the Azure Data Factory. As we have created the endpoints, we should be able to access the data from the SQL uh, database. Uh, so let's go back here and I'm going to go to the a pipeline here and I'm going to click new pipeline and uh, let's uh, do copy activity okay so in the copy activity I'm gonna do source in my source uh, I'm gonna select new and uh, it's uh, Azure SQL hit uh, next select the uh, linked service so that we have is the private endpoint select the table in my case, I'm going to read the data from total sales and then write to the destination. So here uh, you can go ahead and uh, hit OK. Now, if you want to preview the data, you can preview the data. It's going to show you that data. So that tells you we have the permission to access our SQL database and uh, by using the private endpoints. So we are all good here. Go to sync. And here we are going to make another uh, connection, actually creating a data set. So same link service because it's uh, pointing to the same uh, Azure SQL database uh, and here uh, select the table where we would like to write the data so hit OK now and uh, you're all good the mapping is OK just leave that as default because it has the same definition like a source uh, so I'm gonna right click here say uh, debug and once uh, we put in debug in uh, it should uh, queued and then in progress and then finally successful so you guys can see inputs right there all right so finally our data is written so we can go to the preview here we can see that it read 11 rows and it has written 11 rows so we are all good here and you can see further like uh, how much time and everything it took to write these 11 rows so from here you understand how to create the private endpoints in azure data factory to access your azure sql database and how you will go through the process of provisioning and approving between the azure data factory and azure portal and then uh, finally you know uh, the all the details uh, how to take a look uh, from the fire 
uh, firewall or endpoints uh, how exactly this uh, whole thing uh, look like uh, so thank you very much for watching and if you guys have any question uh, please uh, go ahead and write in uh, comments uh, and uh, I would love to answer whatever uh, you know or whenever I get chance to uh, answer that uh, so I appreciate uh, and uh, I will see you guys in next video